Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Most Merciful. I'd like to welcome you, dear viewers, to another in our series, The Forces of Evil. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be on each and every one of you. In this segment of our program, we continue to look at the second method by which the satanic forces creates confusion and corruption in the world. It does corruption, desires, and sin. That these things which are naturally evil, which we should know to be evil, are made to seem appealing to us. We spoke about the role of the media in this, you know, in promoting corruption in the society. Uh, and, you know, how things which the disbelievers have taken now to, uh, to be a norm, these things have, are now, you know, appearing attractive to the believers themselves because of the media promoting them as good. You know, and, and of, of course for the disbelievers, you can, it's very difficult to convince them that such and such a thing is not good because these things are, are brought into the society through people, human desires. The satanic forces will play and work on desires because when the desires become attached to something, a person becomes addicted to that thing, very, very difficult to break them free. If they are attached to it because of ignorance, you know, they, they, this was a practice they were doing, but they were not aware, you know, and then you give them the knowledge that easily cures that problem. However, when people are linked to something on the basis of that emotion, that desire, it's locked in on it, then it's very, very difficult to handle. And we spoke of alcohol as being the major facilitator of that. We spoke about the media, we spoke about now of alcohol, how alcohol lowers human inhibitions and then makes sinful things appear appealing, attractive, etc. Now, the second area related to this is that of sexual deviation. Sexual deviation. That males and females, but in, and usually when you hear the text, they refi, refer mainly to to the males, etc., because much of the deviation comes through their channel. The women tend to follow. So, uh, you know, men are often addressed. For example, Prophet Sallallahu had said, اِتَّقُوا النِّسَاء فَإِنَّ أَوَّلَ فِتْنَةٍ أَوْ أَوَّلْ فِتْنَةْ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلْ كَانَتْ فِي النِّسَاء That is, uh, beware of women, for indeed, the first trial or temptation of the children of Israel came through women. Now, from the Islamic perspective, it's not a matter that woman is the great temp temptress. She is the evil one. You know, she is the one who got Adam to eat from the apple and then they fell from the garden of evil, even of Eden. This is not the Islamic belief. Adam and Eve were jointly responsible. Adam even more so than Eve. <clears throat> he was the head of their family. And Allah forgave them. So it's not an evil which has been put on women and now women are carrying this evil down through the centuries. But Allah warns us through his prophet to beware of women in the sense that you know there are guidelines which Islam has set for women. If we allow women to go beyond these guidelines then they become a trial, a danger to human society because uh, they be, they're, they're, men are naturally attracted to women, you know. And uh, Prophet ﷺ in a narration found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, he said, I didn't leave behind a trial more severe on men than women. You know, this is a major trial facing Muslims and non-Muslims also alike. As I said, it's not because women are inherently evil or anything, but because of the fact that if men and women don't stay within the bounds which have been set by God, then it leads to corruption in the society. This is why Islam has women covering themselves. It separates men from women in, in, in uh, so many walks of life. Uh, they're separated. There's this separation between the male and the sexes. Uh, women are covered to protect them, to let themselves be known in the society. All of that there to protect the women, at the same time also to protect the society from the harm which comes from uh, women coming under attack by males 
in the society. So Islam encourages to avoid uh, sexual deviation in the society by all means, whether it means also uh, the issue of the dowries. The dowries themselves can become an issue of temptation and, and, and sexual deviation, wherein Unfortunately, you find Muslims, you know, dowry is normally given by the male to the female, symbolic of his preparedness to look after that female. However, you know, as wealth came into societies more, you had elements that promoted the idea of huge dowries to, that was according to their status, etc., etc. And this became very popular, especially with the coming of oil into the Gulf and these kind of things. But what that led to is that men could not marry early anymore. The cost of getting married, married became very, very exorbitant. You know, people have to be, you know, saving and saving and saving and the, the, the wedding reception and, and, you know, then preparing a home and all of these things became so complicated that men started to get married much later in their 30s and these type of things. But what was the consequence? What was the consequence? The consequence is that if men don't get married, at the time in their late teens, early 20s, etc. This is the time when their hormones are the strongest, you know. They're driven the greatest. So if they don't get married at that time, then these desires are going to manifest themselves in other, through other channels. And what you find, you know, unfortunately, you know, in, in certain parts of the Middle East, etc., you know, is that there, there's a prominence, you know, of homosexual activity amongst males. I mean, it may not be the type of homosexual activity which, you know, is common in certain other societies where it is a chosen way of life, where people actually choose that way of life. But it is a situation where people, uh, you know, have these desires and there's no way to fulfill it. So, you know, these uh, elements uh, become available and people end up in homosexual activity, you know, for temporary periods of time when they get married or when they are able to have means, etc. Outside of that, then they get married and they leave that behind them. But still, there's that period of homosexual activity and you can find it in schools and these type of things. Very, very dangerous. You also find it with workers. You know, workers who, you know, are not able to bring their families, unfortunately. They're not able to bring their families, you know, because of certain legal restrictions, etc which, you know, don't allow them to bring their families here with them. So you have these massive groups of males working. And then, with no opportunity to, again, uh, have, uh, bring their wives, etc., you know, or get married, etc., you find these men, some of these men, will be engaged in certain kind of homosexual activities. Or it could be, uh, you know, going to prostitutes or prostitution, developing, etc., etc. These are among those elements. You know, so we have issues of dowry, we have workers. We also find in prisons, you know, where Muslims or people get stuck in prisons and because they don't have access to women again, there's that tendency for corruption to arise, you know, in this area. So on one hand, uh, women should be available for marriage easily to prevent another element of corruption coming about. But on the other hand, they should not be so accessible as to promote, you know, acts of fornication, adultery, etc., etc., mistresses and all those kind of things. But what we find is that, in general, what, there's a tendency to promote women, promote women in the media. Women has become like a sex object to sell products. You know, the issues of beauty contests, you know, where women are lining up, exposing themselves, you know, going through different you know, uh, physical things and bathing suits and all the kind of things that they're doing. You know, all of this is really, it's really dishonoring the woman. Or she's, you know, displayed in this fashion. But of course, it's supposed to be glamorous. It's made to seem glamorous, very attractive. You know, the woman, she gets a crown and maybe a lot of money and travels around the world and influence and all these kind of things. But it's corruption. It is evil. And it promotes further corruption in the society. You know, also we can find, you know, um, other elements of this corruption coming through the nudist beaches and nudist colonies, 
you know, issues of bathing naked, which is, you know, common, you know, practice in, uh, in, in, in the West, where, for example, students in schools, you know, when they, you know, they play gym, you know, they have uh, PE, whatever, when the time comes to bathe, you know, they're, they're put into these rooms with just shower heads on the walls. So people have to go in there and all bathe naked. You know, this is also exposing people to corruption. This is sexual deviation. It's not necessarily male-female, but it's male-male. You know, men are exposing themselves. And this, this is supposed to be natural. You know, they're promoting this idea that to be shy about oneself, etc., you know, it's, it's considered to be some kind of psychological problem, you know. And the, the basic idea that the West promotes is if you have it, flaunt it, you know. You've got the stuff, then you should be proud of it, show it off, you know, this kind of thing. Whereas this is totally against, you know, Islamic teachings. You know, private parts of the body are to be covered. They're kept from the view of the public, you know, because exposing uh, body parts becomes, you know, a corruptive influence in the society, without a doubt. So, Islam opposes at, at all levels, you know, anything which would promote different aspects of sexual deviation in the society, whether it's through the media, whether it's through things like beauty contests, you know, um, things like, you know, nudist colonies, beaches, this type of things, you know, Islam uh, does try to separate the sexes, males from females, but at the same time, it does encourage early marriage, you know, discourages the late marriages, which tend to uh, produce uh, circumstances uh, for corruption, where males unable to have access to females, you know, in confined areas or in limited places, etc., you find them, you know, getting involved in, you know, corrupt homosexual type activities. And we also talked about, you know, special areas like in prisons, etc. It becomes very, very important that uh, those in positions of authority, etc., be aware, you know, to protect this population, even people in prison, from the harm which may come from it. And co-education, you know, where males and females are studying together. Um, I mean, this is something which has been strongly promoted in the West, the idea of separating girls studying separately, males studying separately. You know, this is something not good, it's not healthy, it's, um, it's not, not educationally sound. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, experiments which have been done in all girl classes, etc., show that girls' performances increase rapidly over mixed uh, classes. And that's the same in the case of males, where their teachers are males. And because, of course, they've done some experiments where they separate the males out, but they give them female teachers. And, of course, Again, this is going to affect the productivity of that class, you know, where males, young males tend to respond more readily to, to male teachers, you know, where female teachers are not able to motivate them and to move them and for them to respond to them in the way that males do. So their productivity may not seem to gain, gain that much or it may not even seem to gain at all. Maybe they might even seem to go backwards. But where male children are separated out and given male teachers, then you find that there is an increase in their productivity. They do become better students, etc. So, even in such a primary area as, as, as uh, a separate education, co-education, instead of co-education or single-sex education, see Islam tries to protect the society from those, uh, the harm which comes from from the mixed education, etc. And that harm may be to the individual where, you know, he goes to class, the males, usually it tends to happen more so with the males, you know, they're distracted by the females in the class. So instead of focusing on one's work, etc., he's focusing on somebody he would like to be, you know, would like to have some relationship with, and girlfriend, etc., these type of things. You know, this is, this is promoted, and this is definitely something harmful. So, uh, the second area, the area of sexual deviation, is uh, an area which uh, satanic forces uh, create confusion in the society, you know, splits up families. I mean, if families are split up because of, you know, extramarital affairs and these kind of things, you know. Um, also, where people get locked into deviant practices like homosexuality. This is why Prophet Muhammad had said, you know, teach your children salah by the time they're seven, and spank, spank them for it by the time they get 
to be 10 and separate them in their beds. Most people think it's just separating the males from the females, but it's separating both the males from the males and the females from the females. They should not sleep, sleep together in the same beds. Why? Because uh, corrupt activity may take place there and the child finds some pleasure in it, etc. And they're now turned towards it. And of course, once they go into school or you know, circumstances outside of school where they come in contact with adults or whoever, tends that reinforces these kind of uh, feelings, these practices, etc. Then we have the makings you know, of corrupt individuals, whether they're homosexuals or heterosexuals. Now, the third major area of uh, beautification of sins and desires is the area of music and singing. And that area, inshallah, we'll cover in our next program. It is a wide enough topic that in order to give it uh, its due and full justice, it will save until our coming program. But suffice to say in this program that we have focused on sexual deviation as the second major area, the area following drinking alcohol or intoxicants. And we could also add to the issue of sexual deviation that much of the deviant behavior becomes facilitated by the taking of alcohol. So they're sort of interrelated. You can't really separate them out. That uh, much of the sexual deviation which takes place in society, you know, is, is where people are under the influence of intoxicants, you know, one way or another. So with that, dear viewers, I'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment of our program, The Forces of Evil program in which we have been looking into evil historically from the time of the creation of the first man and the forces of evil that came along with him Satan and those who followed him from among the world of the jinn this has been a historic struggle a struggle which has been going on through our lives from the earliest uh, you know of times and the law warns us that we should realize that Satan is a clear and open enemy to us and we must take him as that kind of an enemy. If we don't take the forces of evil really as seriously as serious enemies, then we will be easily succumb. We will easily succumb to them. We will easily be overcome by them. You know? So when we talk about uh, forces of evil, we're talking about it warning ourselves and yourselves, dear viewers, about the harm that can come through the forces, the satanic forces in our world. Whether it's the confusion which leads to people to, to deny God's existence or to worship other gods besides God, you know, or even in their own worship it becomes difficult for them to do it because you know, they become so doubtful about it. You know, or you know, it comes through the point of uh, alcohol and corruption, drugs, whether it's cocaine or crack and you know, Every year, every two years, every five years, new elements of drugs are brought into the society which further destroy families, minds, human beings, you know, human beings whose purpose here is to worship God, not to worship their own desires, you know, uh, or to take their desires as their gods, you know, as Allah speaks about. In Surah al jathiyah uh, the 26th chapter, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَا وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ You know, have you not seen the one who has taken as his Lord or as his God his own desires? And Allah sent him astray even with the knowledge that he had. So, dear viewers, we'd like to thank you for being with us in this segment. As I said, uh, we hope that you continue to watch the coming segments. And you may contact me if you'd like to give any comments or would like to share any thoughts on this subject or others. You may contact me at my webpage, bilalphillips.com. That's B-I-L-A-L-P-H-I-L-I-P-S, one word, dot com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.